Hi guys! Um, so I'm here tonight on Squire's Kitchen Facebook. Um, give me a little wave or a shout or a hello if you're there because there's a very real chance I'm just talking to myself in my kitchen at the minute. Oh, I can see two people are on. Okie dokie. So give me a little hello so I know that you can hear me, so I know that my screen's up the right way and that you can hear what I'm saying. Um, that would be super helpful. Um, I'm just going to fiddle with my laptop whilst I'm talking to you because I want to make sure I can see you down here too. Um, so then when I'm painting, I don't have to keep looking into the top of the phone because otherwise I have to paint and stand up, um, which is a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got you on here as well. Hi, Sammy. Um, oh, I'm glad you can see me okay. That is fantastic. I'm just going to just find you on here, make sure that that's all on the go. Hi Debbie. Okie dokie, brilliant. So I've got you, I've got your comments on my laptop now as well. So when I'm painting, I can paint sitting down because all of the painting I've been doing recently, I've been doing standing up and it's playing havoc with my back. Um, so there's quite a few guys on here. Hi Yasmin. Oh, that's really nice that you're joining me tonight. Um, do say hello, do chat to me throughout. It's really nice to chat to you all. Um, you know, I think we're all getting a bit fed up with our own company, so it's quite nice to have a chat with people. Hi, Chris. Hi, Rachel. So, here we are. Um, so, for those of you who maybe haven't come across me before or haven't met me properly before, um, I'm Emily Hankins and I specialise in cocoa butter painting and I am also a very proud ambassador for Squire's Kitchen. So um, I am coming on tonight to do some of my hand painting, some of the painting that I paint all the time and I use Squire's Kitchen products, they're the products that I absolutely love. So you'll be hearing me talk a lot about those as well um, but you'll get to see a little bit of my little bit of my painting, a little whiz through of some of my painting. Um, so some of you will have seen me in my kitchen, in my studio before. Obviously, because of lockdown, I'm not able to be in my studio at the moment. So this is my kitchen at home. This is my little home kitchen in Cornwall. I'm all the way down in Cornwall and I've brought some of my cakes so you guys can see my cakes. Um, so the dog might bark, the cat might wander across, um, but that's all a little bit a little bit live at the minute at home. So just, just to give you forewarning, okay? Um, hi Bev, hi Sherilyn. Um, so yeah, just give me a shout, say hello. If, you know, whilst I'm painting and talking to you about things, ask as many questions as you like. And as long as I see them, I'll try and answer them, okay? So, cocoa butter painting, that's, got, that's what you guys are here for. Um, I love cocoa butter painting. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can paint on cakes. You can paint with dust mixed with vodka, you can paint with gel colours, you can paint with um, ready-made cake paints. Um, Squire's Kitchen do a range of Natasha Collins cake paint. Natasha Collins cake paints, that's really hard to say. Um, but I personally specialise in cocoa butter painting. That is my thing, that is the thing that I really like. I come from an oil painting, acrylic painting background. Um, so I've always liked mm -hmm. a thick paint to work with. Um, some, people, some of you guys might be familiar with watercolour. This is a very different medium to watercolour. I always got frustrated with watercolour when I used to paint with it because it kind of wanders off, it doesn't do what I want it to do. So this is quite a forgiving paint because it stays where you put it. So obviously we'll go through that when we start doing the demo. Um, cocoa butter, it's fab stuff this. So it comes as these little callettes, you can see them here in my little bowl. Um, it's these little nuggets of cocoa butter. And you can get these on the Squire's Kitchen website. They come in 100 gram bags. And you know, the amount I paint, I probably only go through maybe four, maybe five of those bags a year. So don't kind of panic thinking, oh, I want to paint a cake. I need to go and buy three bags of them. A little goes a very, very long way. Um, so if you do decide, oh, I'm just throwing it everywhere. Um, if you do decide to source your cocoa butter elsewhere or you've got some at home in the cupboard, 
just make sure it is food grade cocoa butter because cocoa butter is used in the beauty industry um, it can be blended with other things it can be blended with other oils and nasties which you wouldn't want to use on a cake you wouldn't want to use when you're painting on a cake so just be careful with your cocoa butter that it's food grade um, and the stuff from Squires obviously is so that's great and we're going to mix this cocoa butter with dust colours so these are the dust colours um, just going to find some over here um, these are the dust colours so they're the same sort of colours that you would use for dusting your flowers if you make sugar flowers they're the same blossom dust that you would use for dusting your flowers um, and we're going to mix this with the cocoa butter you, sadly you can't use gel colours or anything like that with the cocoa butter it has to be a dust and that's because the gel colours and things they all have water in them a little bit so you and it, you just end up with a little muddy mess so you need to have the dust colours um, these ones are really really lovely they come in big pots and they've got a lot of colour in them they've got a lot of pigment in them so they're really really great so I'm going to turn my camera around in a second and get on with painting um, and then you guys can ask me any questions while I'm painting and have a little chat with me and um, I'll go through all of the other bits and bobs about cocoa butter painting while I'm talking to you so I'm going to turn my camera around so you can see my hands so you might get to see my ceiling and maybe up my nose um, while I'm doing it so bear with me I'm just going to turn that to the back and I'm going to just try and remember how my mount works and we're going to bring that over here so that you can see my board and I'm going to bring it down slightly because I think it was a little bit far away the other night when we were when I was doing it hi Rhiannon nice to have you with me okay so there we are I think that's all in focus I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit because it doesn't seem to be staying where I put it sorry guys technical difficulty there we go okie dokie so I think you guys can see my board here these are the colours that I'm using and I'm going to bring in my palette over here so you can see that in a second so let me know if you can see that okay just give me a thumbs up if you can see that all all right and I'm going to sit down and start painting so um I'm painting today on a covered cake board and this cake board is covered in an ivory sugar paste I, I've done it on an ivory so that you guys can see the painting against it a little bit better um, obviously you can paint on any sort of any color you want but if you're working on a cake board it's a really good thing to start practicing on just cover some cake boards and you've got something to practice on which is a really nice thing you know and if you're painting your first cake then I always advise you know my students to have an iced cake board next to them so that you guys can you know have a little practice you can have a little practice on your board before you go on to um, onto your cake so I seem to be having a bit of a delay with comments so bear with me there we go that's all right they're all coming up now um, so I'm gonna start painting um, Stephanie has just asked if these are different to luster dusts so um, luster dusts work as well so I've got what have I got in my pot here I've got a gold luster here uh, Squires Kitchen Gold um, and yet yeah, they work absolutely the same way so you can absolutely use them oh I should tell you what I'm painting so I'm gonna paint some scabious flowers for you tonight and scabious flowers I love them they're the little blue flowers you find in English country gardens now I paint freehand all of the painting that I do is freehand and when I teach my students I always teach my students freehand as well um, but what I do do before I put paintbrush to um, sugar paste I always make sure I've done a drawing first so earlier on today I sat down to decide what I was going to paint and um, I printed out some really nice pictures of all oh, that's all the way up 
nice pictures of scabious flowers that I found on Pinterest and then I made sure that I did myself a little drawing so you can see I've only um, coloured in part of it but I've done myself a little drawing so if you want to work if you if you work freehand then it's really good to have a drawing for reference um, and if you decide that you don't want to work freehand that it's a bit scary and that's absolutely fine you can use that drawing that you've done all those reference images to use them as a template you can um, trace those images onto parchment paper and then pin that parchment paper to your cake whether it be on the top or on the side and then you can use a scribing tool I've got one here that I can show you you can use a scribing tool um, just to trace round the edges of your flowers around the edges of your design and then you've got the outline so you can literally just paint in the outline then if you're worried about maybe getting the size of the flowers right or getting them in the right place then um, that's a really good way of doing it but the lovely thing about painting flowers and painting nature is that nature is imperfect um, so you don't have to panic too much if everything doesn't look uniform or if maybe one of your flowers has got slightly less petals than another one of your flowers which happens to me sometimes um, you know it, it's it's just life and that's that's the way it is and it doesn't doesn't matter too much okay so Lynn has just asked do you melt the cocoa butter then mix the dusts in I should have shown you that so here on this side I've got my plate and my plate is sat over a bowl of boiling water I've got boiling water under there and on my plate if I just twiddle it round I've got my cocoa butter melted in a puddle here and then I'm just mixing that in with my dust colours okay so I'm just taking my colours going over to the bar the plate and then mixing that cocoa butter with the dust until it's a really nice thick consistency I want a consistency similar to an acrylic paint to be painting with okay and you can see that it sits really nicely on the sugar paste because it's nice and thick okay I'm just going to paint three really quickly for you and then we're going to put together all the petals and things and make them come to life but I'm just going to base paint these three really quickly so Chris asks do you have a favorite color or a favorite flower to paint um well I think the flower that I paint most of is roses and I love painting roses and unfortunately they take too long to do in a demo like this but I do do them in in classes and things with people um I do like painting roses and I would say that the, the pink spectrum which is vast is definitely my favourite. Um, having said that there is a cake behind me which I will show you a little bit later on which is all in blue and white and that's another favourite of mine to paint with. I like painting in just two colours um, just simply blue and white or um, black and white or something like that. I do like doing that. So um, I'm just going to quickly put these petals on and you'll see how quickly these flowers start to come together once we've got this base painting done, once we've got the shapes on, you'll see how quickly it comes together. So cocoa butter painting is really, really versatile because you can paint on all sorts of different things with cocoa butter paint. You can paint on sugar paste, um, like I'm painting on now, you can paint on white, or you can paint on colours, you can paint on black sugar paste. There is actually, in Cakes and Sugar Craft, um, the next, the summer edition, there will be one of my cakes in there which is painted on black sugar paste, which is really striking. Um, and so you can paint on all sorts of different colours, because it's opaque and it sits on the top. Um, you can paint on chocolate ganache. You can paint on royal icing. You can paint on tempered chocolate. So I've recently done a little demo on painting on Easter eggs. Um, because it's an oil-based paint, it sits on the surface. And that is also really helpful for us if we make a mistake. Um, because it's really easy to get it off. And in a minute, when I've got a little bit further with this, I will show you how to take the cocoa butter paint off. Because it just sits on the surface, you can just scrape it off with a scalpel if you make a mistake 
which is really really handy and a really good tip to know when I when I teach classes as soon as I tell my students that everybody sighs like a, a complete sigh of relief that you can um, you can get rid of it if you make a mistake so that's you know really really good um, Darren asks are the brushes specific for cocoa butter painting or can you use any sort of brushes that's a very good question Darren and that was going to be the next thing I told you about so these paintbrushes I'm using at the moment are actually nail art paintbrushes um, and I've just bought these online now you can buy all sorts of lovely paintbrushes for painting and you know the wonderful Squirrels Kitchen do do a lovely range of paintbrushes which I have a few of um, the only problem is with really nice quality brushes the cocoa butter will kill them because as soon as that cocoa butter sets in that bristle once it goes cold it will set in the bristle then you remelt it on your plate and then it'll go cold again and it will remelt it on your plate the bristles if they're a fine bristle or a um, natural bristle like a sable or something then they are just going to snap you're just going to end up losing all your bristles you actually just want something cheap and cheerful um, you want a cheap and cheerful synthetic brush and that's what I'm using at the moment um, so something just cheap and cheerful and Sally asks what's the best shape to use I personally love a flat brush so you can see that I'm using a flat brush oh, I'm gonna make that slightly darker because you guys can't see that um, I personally like a flat brush because it means I can scoop up that paint and get it on quickly and that's what I want to do. I want to be able to scoop the paint up and get it on to my painting as quickly as I can. Um, because at the end of the day, we are working with food and we have to remember that, that there is a finite amount of time that we can be fiddling around with this. So it's all very well using teeny, teeny, tiny brushes, um, but we really want to be getting on with it. You might find, when you give this a go yourself, that you prefer a rounded brush. Um, but personally, I find a fat, flat brush ideal for this and they're really good for shading. Once we come to the blending and the shading part of this, you'll see how important you know that flat brush is. Um, Hannah has just asked, can you paint with gel food colours? You can't use the cocoa butter with gel colours, sadly. Um, you can paint with gel food colours, uh, but they won't have the same effect as what I'm doing today. Um, the gel just will not mix with the cocoa butter and you'll end up, you know, if you've melted chocolate and um, you get a little bit of water in it and it goes lumpy, that's what will happen if you try and put gel colours in with your cocoa butter. Okay, what's the shade of blue that I'm using? I This is actually um, the QFC blue, this just normal QFC blue. And I've just put a touch of this pale lilac in with it just to make it a little bit purpley. And after this is done, I will take a photo of all the colours I've used and take a photo of the finished product and I'll pop them all up um, after the video so that you guys can refer back to it and see what I've used um, because I know that you guys might want to refer to that. Um, so I'm just I'm just overcoating with this pale blue now so I start all of my flowers all of my paintings I start with the lightest color so that I've got a highlight um, so I've started with white and I'm now just using this pale blue I'm just gonna go trying to do it super quickly because I don't want to bore you um, super quickly just round with that pale blue which is the base color for that petal after the white and I'm just going to darken that up with some shading. I'm just adding some more um, blue. I'm adding a touch of that pinky lilac to it just to make a nice sort of oh, scabious colour. They're very pretty little flowers. They've got to, I always think for a very pretty little flower, they've got to, haven't got a very pretty name, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so I'm just going to quickly shade through the bottom of each petal so when you're thinking about shading the shading always goes at the bottom of each petal 
building up around the edges and up to the top because that's how your flower will end up look looking cupped and if you can see I'm hardly putting any paint on my brush at the moment and that flat brush is allowing me to just spread that paint out and blend it through I'm just blending that paint up through my petals and I'm just layering up the colour and cocoa butter painting is all about layering and if you find um, if you find that you're struggling to blend with your brush then the warmth from a nice clean finger um, can just help you blend out that colour because it can just melt the cocoa butter again slightly um, and just help you blend that colour through obviously again we're working with food so we need to make sure we've got nice clean fingers Julie says you can't use gels with cocoa butter because there's little water in them and that ruins the consistency of the paint absolutely Julie um, you've obviously heard me harping on about that before um, yeah absolutely that's exactly the same reason um, so and you know any of the paste colours or gel colours they've all got a tiny bit of water in them um, and that water just doesn't mix sadly with the cocoa butter but you know you can get such a lovely range of dusts you don't need to worry um, and you know you can paint with with dusts and as we said the lustres as well which is really nice having said that I do find that the lustres don't luster quite as much as they would if you mix them with a high value alcohol or something like that but they do work and it does look pretty um, but then it's not quite as shimmery shiny and metallic as they would be if you had some sort of high value alcohol with them okay so i'm just going back in with some even darker shading now you can see these are starting to come to life now um, Stephanie says she can't wait for her cocoa butter to arrive so you can give it a try I am so glad um, I think quite Squire's Kitchen are having a bit of a run on cocoa butter at the minute so and I am so glad because it is such a lovely thing to do and especially at the moment when we're all feeling a little bit meh and you know if any of you guys are a bit like me it's you've sort of lost your mojo a bit and it's a really nice mindful activity to sit down with some paint brushes nice cup of tea which I've just realized I forgot to make myself a cup of tea I hope you guys have all got one um, it's a really nice mindful activity to sit down with your paint brushes and do a bit of painting um, something really nice to think about at the moment and actually if you guys um, if you're interested <coughs> I've just said about not having a cup of tea and I've got a cough now there we go um, if you guys are interested, you can pop over to my website, um, which is www.emilyhankins.co.uk, and there's actually some free colouring pages on there at the minute, um, which I've made for you guys. So you can either use them for a bit of mindful colouring, or you can actually use them as templates to do your own bit of painting, if you wanted to print them off and use them as templates for a little bit of painting. So that's quite a nice thing to do. Um, so I've built up my flowers here. Um, so Lex has asked, can you paint with cocoa butter onto fondant and buttercream or just ganache? So not buttercream, yes. Um, Rasika, I hope I've said that right. Rasika has said not on buttercream. No, sadly you can't use it on buttercream because, because we've got our plates sat on this boiling water under here, the paint will always be a bit warm. And however long you've left your sugar paste to crust you're still going to take some of the surface of the sugar paste off and it's just not going to work um you know by all means give it a go yourself your sugar paste your buttercream might be a different consistency to mine um but you yeah you mean by all means give it a chance try but i don't think it will work and with regards to the um sugar paste as well I'm just going to add just tell you what I'm doing actually before I carry on nattering on um, I'm just adding an inner ring 
of more petals because scabious flowers have got a lovely full flower full they're a full flower full of petals so I'm just adding an inner ring now of more petals I'm just gonna go whiz round with this um, so I can't remember what I was saying actually I've got distracted um, Carol you missed the address for the colouring sheet don't panic I will tell you all of that at the end um, so you can find all that off I'll, I'll let help you find all that at the end no worries oh somebody's put put the website up thank you very much um, so yes the website's there and you can find my colouring sheets on there so they're a nice um, you know nice way of either doing a bit of mindful colouring or um, you can use them as a template to give yourself a give it give a have a bit of a go at this so you can see I'm just putting this white paint on quite thickly again just whizzing round um, and just adding an inner ring of petals because we want these to be nice and full now for those guys for those of you who've maybe watched a couple of my demos you'll see that quite a lot of my flower shapes are fairly similar and you know when you start painting flowers you'll realize that you can break flower shapes down into quite similar shapes so this flower and quite a lot of the other flowers I've been painting recently um, because simply because they're quick for me to do in a demo um, they're based on a circular center and then petals coming around radiating from that and you know it's all about the different size and shape of the petals so depending on what shape petals and what size they are depends on what the flower is and obviously what color it is um, so you know heart shaped petals just some simple five heart shaped petals you'd get some primroses um, it's yeah absolutely all about the shape and size of the petal and these are just really simple if you're going to start with a flower a flower with a center and then petals around the outside is a really good basic flower to start with okay oh Darren's just said they've gone onto the Squires website now and they've been busy because there's no stock of cocoa butter I've sold them out sorry guys um, I'm sure it'll be back soon I am absolutely sure it'll be back soon so I'm again going to do exactly what I've done before I'm just going to go back in with this nice pale blue colour and I'll just mix 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 on my plate and the nice thing about this as well is you can um, go away from this to have a cup of tea or have your lunch or something and your water will go cold and your paint will go hard and as soon as you put warm pay, uh, water back underneath in the bowl, your paint will melt again. So you don't have to worry about losing the colours that you've mixed, which is really good. So, um, do show any questions at me while I'm painting, otherwise I'll just be wittering on at you. I'm just going to carry on going around with the shading. So shading at the bottom of the petals building up the colour and leaving that white highlight on the top and that's what's going to let those petals pop away from each other because we already built that shading up on that lower um, edge of pe red ridge of petals underneath the lower level of petals we've already got a nice bit of shading down there so these light petals are popping away from the ones underneath so I'm just going to add some more dark shading all the way around which is just going to make these pop away from the centre all the way round okay Sally says I'm presuming it would work on a macaron absolutely I've painted on macarons it works on macarons it works on cake pops if you're brave enough um, it's you can use it if you've royalized a cookie to paint on that. It's a really, really versatile paint. Um, so I'm just going to carry on all the way around. Thank you for sticking with me 
with my shading. I know it's not the most exciting bit to watch. Okay. So Hannah has asked, um, got into painting on sugar paste a little while ago, but found that using the gel colour seemed to split and crack and go gloopy when the picture dries. Would you be better? Um, but personally, if you're having trouble with the gel, gel colours, then I would absolutely give the cocoa butter painting a go because it is really forgiving and it's um it's a really nice medium to work with and it dries very quickly so I mean this is dried already so you can layer the paint up paint very very quickly okay so um which colors are we using so yes you'll hear me carry on talking about these these are um, I'm working with cocoa butter paint which is melted cocoa butter mixed with dust colors okay and Francis says scabies are your favorite flowers they really are mine I love them too I really love seeing yeah, unfortunately we living in Cornwall it's very damp here as you can imagine so um, we have a lot of problem with slugs in the garden which is completely rubbish and um, I love scabious, but the slugs also love scabious, so they don't grow very well for me. Um, but I do love seeing them in a country garden. They do make me very happy. So I am going to do this centre now of this flower. I'm just mixing a pale green. I think I'm a little bit off camera, so I don't think you can see it. Um, I'm just going to put a little pale green centre in the middle of each one. I'm just going to refresh my laptop a minute because I seem to have frozen on there so I might be missing some of your comments. Okay. I'm just going to put a little centre in here. I'm just going to blow that up a little bit again. There we go. Sorry about that. As I was saying at the beginning, I've been doing quite a lot of demos recently, which has been really, really lovely. Um, but I tend to do them standing up so that I can read the comments in my phone. And my back <laughs> is absolute agony at the moment. Um, so I've discovered, and I'm sure that, you know, most of you guys knew this anyway. Um, I've discovered that I can actually watch you guys on the laptop and watch your comments on there. Um, so I don't have to paint standing up, which is amazing. Um, there's a bit of a delay, but it's okay. Okay. So. Uh, Claire says, you really make the flowers come to life. Now, making your flowers come to life is all about light and shade it is all about not being scared of the shading not being scared of putting that shading on and also making sure you leave yourself a really nice area of white highlight and that's also really super important and that's what you know as you've watched me paint and it's got the shading has got darker and darker that's what's making my flowers pop okay so I'm just building up my centre with some green now. Um, Rasika, I hope I've said that right. Rasika said, is it possible for the first colour of layered petals to mix when painting the second layer on top of them? Um, so if you haven't quite let your layer of paint set, then yes, it could. Um, I'm painting here under quite a hot light and my paint isn't completely dry. But as long as your paint has set underneath, um, you should be absolutely fine make, um, layering that paint on the top. There's there's absolutely no issue. And, and it doesn't tend to come off. You don't tend to have any issue with it coming off. Um, the only time I ever find it lifts the paint from underneath is if I have changed the water and my paint has become super duper hot again. And if it's got, if I've got super duper hot paint, then um, occasionally it might lift 
the um, the paint from underneath. So you just have to make sure your paint, your water's not super duper hot. So I'm just putting some little dots of colour in the centre just to build up the centre and make it look more realistic. Um, you don't seem to need to change the brush for a change of colour. So I tend to try and keep each of my brushes um, for each colour. And I try not to wash my brushes if I can help it. I try not to have to clean them out. Um, because I work with pretty basic paint brushes, I tend to just get rid of them when they get, become a bit scrappy. Um, which means that I've always got a clean... Uh, not, not haven't always got a clean brush to, to use. That sounds really wasteful. But um, I try to make sure that I keep, you know, blue brushes for blue and white brushes for white and kind of do it that way rather than trying to wash my brush between each colour. Okay. So, would this... Oh, somebody else has asked about buttercream. Sadly not. It doesn't work on buttercream just because our paint is warm. We're working on a plate put on a bowl of hot water and our paint is slightly warm, so it just won't work, sadly. I'm just going to do a little outline of just white petals around the edge, which I don't know if you guys can actually see. I'm going to try and put them on nice and thickly, just so that you can see them pop against the colour underneath and that's going to give some texture to that centre. You know we have to remember that we are making a hand painted cake, we're using a hand painted technique creating a hand painted product so it's actually really nice to see brush strokes and the thickness of paint. Um, that's I really love that about cocoa butter paint that you can build up a texture with it um, it's not just flat like watercolour, you can build up a texture. Okay, so I'm just putting this colour around the edge. Thank you, Jennifer, that's really, really kind. Okay, so I'm just using the white. And I would say that the white is definitely the colour that I use most of. I use white mixed with everything and on its own for highlights. Um, I use white all of the time and I tend to buy it kind of by the few tubs rather than singly these days because I do get through a lot of it. Okay, so just all the way around the edge with this white. Then I might just put a few little tiny dots just in this centre just to lift. You can see just by adding that highlight, it's just lifted that center and make it made it go on from really flat to just lifted. Okay. So there are our simple scabious flowers. I think, well, I know that flowers do need leaves, and the leaves um, always frame the flowers they the leaves frame the flowers um actually i'll tell you what i'm gonna do because i've just looked at it and it needs something else so i'm just gonna add where's my little tiny brown brush just gonna add a tiny bit of this chestnut which i've got sitting here and i'd completely forgotten about it just gonna add a tiny bit of this chestnut just to add another just little ring of dots just around the outside of that green centre and these are sort of the stamen they represent the stamen of the flower and you can see how that dark shading has actually really deepened the centre of that flower it's made that flower look a little less flat which is what we're aiming for with the, the shading I hope you guys can see that I think it might be a little bit delicate to see from where you are, so I'm just going to make it a bit darker. Okay. I'm 
just going to put some around here as well. Um, what have you? What have people said? Love scabies. Thank you, Rosemary. Have I ever done fuchsias? I love painting fuchsias. Um, fuchsias are really nice flower. Fuchsias remind me of my childhood garden. Actually, we always had lots of fuchsia bushes. And there's a lovely fuchsia bush on the walk that I take my dog on. I do tend to take ridiculous amount of photos of flowers when I'm out walking. <laughs> my husband and my son get really frustrated with me because I'm always stopping taking pictures of flowers or nice looking leaves. Um, because it's, you know, it's good inspiration. So I'm going to do a little seed head up here or a little flower head, a little bud because I wanted to show you how to do those as well and I think they add something nice to your design when you're painting it's really important to think about your composition and think about where um, where your flowers are going what journey you're going to take them on and how that you're going to how you're going to bring movement into your design because we like to bring well I like to bring movement into everything that I paint and that tends to come with the leaves. Um, tends to come when you start adding the leaves and things like maybe buds and seed heads. These things are going to add movement to your design. Okay, so we've got our little buds up here. I'm just going to add a little bit of brown around there just to make that a bit more obvious. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Bit of a sniffle. Um, I'm just going to highlight over here. So, oh, Raquel, your work is very pretty. Thank you. Could you use it on a fondant covered biscuit? Um, and does it affect the taste? That's a really good question. Do you know, I don't think anybody's asked me that um, while well, I've been doing these demos recently. It, you absolutely can paint on a fondant cover biscuit and actually it's a really lovely way of decorating biscuits and that's how I tend to do it um, I don't tend to cover my biscuits with um, sugar um, with royal icing I tend to cover them with sugar paste and yes that's really lovely to paint on them and no I personally don't think it affects the taste at all I was very worried actually that when I first started using it that you would get a sort of oily taste from it and it would taste a bit greasy um but I've never had a worry I've never had an issue with it and you know I've I've eaten a fair amount of my own cakes which I'm sure you know we all do and I've never had a worry about the taste of it I, it's never affected it as far as I'm concerned and obviously on a cake the amount that you'd actually consume would be minimal uh, on a biscuit obviously it's a little bit more but no, I have never had any complaints and personally, I think it's absolutely fine. So you see, I have just painted a little dome, which I've added light and shade to. And then I've just finished those with some little leaves to make some pretty little buds. Okay. So... Um, Sherry Ann says, I'm from Malaysia. Hello from Malaysia. Would like to find out if any type of cocoa butter would work with the dust or do we need to look for a specific type? Um, the ones we come here, come in a paste. Um, so, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I should have made a cup of tea. I'm going to start painting some leaves now while I'm talking to you. Um, so, you can actually paint with Trex, which is a vegetable shortening. Um, and I have given that a go actually for the sake of um, well knowing what it's like and being able to tell people about it and it does work you absolutely can do it and it works in pretty much the same way the only trouble that I find with it is it just doesn't set in quite the same way as this as the cocoa butter does because the cocoa butter starts solid it reverts to a solid um, once it dries whereas obviously with the shortening it's going to start slightly soft so as it sets it remains slightly soft um, so that's not a problem 
per se but it just makes it a little bit harder to maybe layer your paint and if you're in a warm country which you know I've not been to Malaysia but I'm assuming you are in a fairly warm country um, there would be more risk of it um, melting which you know we don't have that issue in the UK but if if it was a warm country I would imagine there might be more risk of it melting so you know by all means give it a go and see what happens um, somebody asked yesterday actually when I was or in the week while I was doing a demo whether you could paint with coconut oil as well and I said exactly the same thing that it's it's really all about giving it a go um, just giving it a try so I'm going to move my plate over slightly because I've just realised that my hand's very much over what I'm painting and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just adding some leaves in now. Have a look at the leaves that go with whatever flower you're painting. Um, leaves are there to frame your flower. You can see how these leaves are lifting my flower. They are framing my flower, they are lifting it and they're making the whole design look complete and they're adding this movement which is what I want. If the flowers that go, the leaves that go with your flowers, you don't particularly like, then I wouldn't worry too much. I'd just do whatever leaf shape you want. Um, I don't paint botanically correct flowers. You know, these are my impression of a scabious, and this is my impression of a scabious leaf. Um, they're not botanically correct by any means. So, you know, do what you feel comfortable with. If you don't feel that you can get the hang of a, you know, scabious leaf or a feathery um, oh, what was I looking at? I was looking at painting Cosmos for you actually and I thought they were a bit too similar to some of the anemones I've painted recently so I wanted to paint something a bit different um, but the Cosmos leaves are really interesting and that's why I was going to paint them because the Cosmos leaves are sort of really feathery um, but if you feel that you just can't get to grips with the leaf I'm still holding my hand over what I'm painting so I'm just going to come around here a bit um, if you feel you can't get to grips with the leaf of whatever you're painting just give it something green that looks a bit leaf shaped I really you know wouldn't worry too much the star of the show is the flower and that's what we want to be concentrating our time on so when I'm um, building up a design and you know lots of you will have seen my wedding cakes which is what I paint primarily then I will always start with the biggest flower Whatever's going to be the showstopper in my design, I will start with the biggest flower and then I will work myself down from there and then I will finish with the foliage and I will add my foliage. Like if you were making sugar flowers, you would be you know, making your flowers but you'd also be making sure that you've got that filler foliage and you'd be adding that foliage at the end to make sure you've got all of your areas of your composition looking filled and making sure it looks right and also just framing your flowers and filling in gaps so that's really what I'm doing with these leaves and I'm just doing them very quickly as you can see you know I'm not, I'm not taking too much time over them just trying to get them on and you know get something nice and soft on there so Sharon says they look oh thank you darling that's really really kind of you um do you use your brush mainly from the side or flat to the cake if that makes any sense yeah it absolutely does make sense caroline so i tend to use my brush quite upright and it very much depends on what i'm painting on but i do tend to use my brush quite upright when i was trying to paint over there i'm trying to do it so that you can see what i'm doing and i wouldn't normally paint flat like that i normally paint very upright obviously i spend the majority of my time painting on wedding cakes which are upright um and actually i find it quite hard painting on a flat cake board now because i paint upright most of the time um and again when you paint upright on the side of a cake you want to make sure your paintbrush is very at a right angle with what you're painting um and that will help you get the paint off of it effectively really so i'm just going to finish this leaf because I'm sure squires don't want me on here all night painting for you, although I'm sure I probably could. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of shading now as I'm going round. So I'm just mixing a slightly darker green 
I'm going to start with these ones down here because these have dried already. You can see these have dried already. Um, so I can I can now layer my paint without taking off the colour underneath. So I'm just going to put that darker shading on and don't be scared of the dark shading because that's what's going to make it all come to life. Adding in that dark shading brings it all to life and gives you that depth and that's what you need. You need that depth. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit around here. So do feel free to keep asking any questions if you have any. Um, I've been cocoa butter painting for probably about, well, I've, been, I've had my business for about eight years. And I started my business um, after my son was born and I've really missed being creative and wanted to do something that was creative and started making cakes for friends and things which I've always wanted to I'd always loved doing I'd always loved making cakes but never in a million years thought it would be a career I was actually working as a graphic designer and um, it's it, it just really just grew from there I thought I would I thought I would end up making a few cakes for friends and family every now and again and never in a million years thought I would be in the position I am in and you know showing you guys how to paint things on cakes and I have to say that I'm very grateful to Squire's Kitchen actually for all of the support they've given me over the years because they've always been very supportive of my work and are an absolutely wonderful team and a wonderful family to work with so you know I'm super grateful to them so I'm just carrying on adding the shading to these leaves. You can see it's really brought these to life. Um, so Jackie says, is it best when starting to learn to start off painting lightly and building up? Absolutely. It's you know what I say to all my students, you can add, but you cannot take away. So yeah, absolutely. Start with light colors and then build up that shading gradually if you're not comfortable with it because it's always easier to make it darker it's very difficult to take it away okay so what i was saying to you at the beginning was about um the scalpel and how to actually get rid of something if you're not happy with something being on your work because the cocoa butter stays on the surface of the painting you can actually just scrape it off with a scalpel and I'm just going to really quickly, just very simply, take away part of this petal here. And you can see that that's just come off really, really easily. And it will just, just get rid of it super quick for you. So the last thing I tend to do with lots of my designs, and then I will let you all go and, you know, watch Corrie or whatever you need to be doing. Um, I will just add a few little training leaves because training leaves are really really good for adding this movement that I was talking about and adding a little bit of an extra softness and an extra dimension to your design that's a really fat brush for paint training leaves I need a smaller brush let's find a smaller brush there's one um, so I am just going to use a fine brush and just add some trailing leaves just to add a bit of softness to my work. Now, you guys will probably, from now on, whenever you look at one of my cakes, spot the trailing leaves, because pretty much every design I do has got these in it. I just think they add a little bit of softness, um, they give it an extra dimension, and they add the movement that I was talking about, and that's what's so important, is just trying to get that movement in. And it'll make your painting come to life. Okay, so I'm just adding a few little stems of leaves down there. And I'm going to put a few coming over here so those don't look on their own. And just take them for a little journey, take them on a little walk so you get some little leaves all over the place. OK, 
Okay. And let's put some over here. Let's put a few behind here. Julie said it's very therapeutic watching and I and it's very therapeutic doing it as well. And I think, you know, if if you want to give something a go on lockdown, you know, obviously don't put yourselves under super amounts of pressure to learn 25 new techniques while we're all stuck in this set situation. Because, you know, I know a lot of lot of guys, a lot of you guys are feeling, you know, it's very challenging at the moment. You know, lots of you have got kids to juggle and and work to juggle and all sorts of things so you know don't put yourselves under pressure to learn a million new things but if you do decide to give something a go then something like painting is actually a really lovely thing to learn at the moment or just to have a go at because it's really therapeutic it's not stressful you can just give it a go you can ice a cake board have a play on it nobody ever has to see it you never have to share it with the world and it's you know make yourself a nice cup of tea put something on telly or listen to some nice re relaxing music and it's something really nice to do at the moment um, so I've just got a few little leaves in there and I think that's probably about it <laughs> Leslie says about Bob Ross and his happy little clouds now I've only very recently come to learn about Bob Ross. I think, you know, I was probably a bit young to find him the first time round. And a couple of people over the last year have said to me, you teach like Bob Ross. Because I always talk about, you know, leaves having friends and and very th various things. And apparently I have a very relaxing voice. So, um, yes, it's funny that you mention him because he does seem to come up a lot in conversations <laughs> about painting. And yes, leaves are like happy clouds. Um, there we go. So, I think we're probably done there. I could probably carry on for a little bit longer, but I think, you know, for the sake of what we're doing now, and you guys have been, you guys have stuck with me for an hour, so probably shouldn't keep you any longer. Oh, I tell you what, the last thing I was going to give you what show you was um, Squire's Kitchen do a lovely range of moulds. Um, they do a lovely range of different moulds. So this is a bumblebee mould. This is one of my favourites and I use this quite a lot because obviously bumblebees and flowers go together really super well. Um, so all I've done is I've pressed some floral paste, some SFP. So I've got the SFP here. You guys have all got, probably got some of this knocking about in your cupboard. It's the best floral paste ever. Um, I've just pressed a little bit of that into this mould. I, I made sure I dusted the mould with a little bit of cocoa powder, um, not cocoa powder, uh, cocoa butter on the brain. Um, corn flour. I dusted it with a little bit of corn flour first and I've just pressed some SFP into these moulds and I've got these little bees. So I've got a little bumbly bee and I put that bumblebee into a little bit of paper actually. This is a little bit of a scrap of paper so I probably should have done it in a bit of something nicer. Um, I've just put my bumblebee into a scrap of paper and I only did this literally about 10 minutes before I came on. So that's how quickly that sugar paste and um, that floral paste has set. And I've got a lovely little 3D butterfly now with his wings sticking up. And then I super quickly painted one just before I came on. So I've got a super quick painted one. Literally just yellow, a um, couple of shades of yellow, some black. Just used the indentations because there's lovely indentations in the mould. And I just use those indentations as a guide just to paint his little wings. And then we've got a little pretty bumbly bee to sit with our scabious flowers and I just thought that was another nice little thing um, that you guys can add to your work it's nice to add a little bit of texture sometimes and obviously you know these moulds from Squires are lovely and they do all sorts of different ones um, but the bumblebee is one of my favourites and you know the floral paste is great for using for different things like that and I've just painted him in exactly the same way as we've done this just using a little bit of the cocoa butter paint okay so I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see my face again and I will tell you where you can find me uh, bear with me while I just turned you can see my ceiling again 
I'm just going to put it over there. Okie dokie, I'm just going to move it over slightly. Oh, that was the sugar paste, that was the floral paste falling on the floor. Um, okay, so, oh, I'm a bit low down now. Sorry guys, I'll finish twiddling in a second. There we go. That's better. Oh, somebody found a bumblebee emoji. Um, there we go. There we go, you can see my head now, and the cakes. So, we've done that little bit of cocoa butter painting tonight. You guys, it's been really lovely that you've stuck with me. I'm, I'm really happy that you've stuck with me all the way through. Um, and, you know, if I will go back and have another look at this later on, um, this will be put up on the Squire's Kitchen website, and, uh, not website, uh, Facebook. And um, if, if I'll, I'll, I'll run through later, and if I've missed any of your questions, I'll answer them. Um, so, this is our pretty little painting that we've done. Um, the scabious flowers and the leaves on this nice ivory background. It's literally just on a cake board, so it's a really good way of practicing. Um, and I've used the Squire's Kitchen cocoa butter and my dust colors. I have such a big collection. <laughs> I think I have every single dust. Um, so yeah, all of the Squire's Kitchen dust colours and the lustres are absolutely fine to use as well. Somebody asked that again recently and I didn't manage to answer it. If you want to find out a little bit more about me or my work, um, I feature in Cakes and Sugar Craft most editions. Um, obviously, you know, this is a, a, a publication that from Squires. Um, so you can find Cakes and Sugar Craft in the shops and actually they have just launched an online downloadable PDF. So if you haven't managed to get this from the shops, um, you can go on to the Squires Kitchen website and you can find a downloadable PDF of this. Um, and this one, I'm going to show you because I love this little cake, has got my Easter cake in it and I know it's a little bit late now. Um, I can't find it. There he is. Um, I know it's a little bit late now, but it's it's got my little Easter cake in it. It's got my little Easter bunny, little hand-painted Easter bunny. Um, and also, another really nice thing to find is the pink book. It's designer cake decorating, and there's several of my tutorials in here. Um, and also, there are some incredible tutorials from other cake designers all over the world. And... It's a such a lovely book. It's got really modern cake decorating techniques in it and it's really, really nice. Sugar flowers, painting, wafer paper, royal icing, all sorts of lovely things. So you can find out more about me on my website, um, which is www.emilyhankins.co.uk and you can sign up to my little newsletter jobby there. Um, which will tell you when I'm teaching next and when I've got online content coming out and online classes and things like that. You can find me on social media, um, on Facebook at Emily Hankins Cakes and on Instagram at Emily Hankins Cakes. And you can also find me on YouTube now. Um, I'm uploading various time-lapse things and demos on there just to give you a bit of inspiration for your work, okay? So, uh, Barbara says, could you please show the cake with the one colour flowers just behind you? This one, Barbara. Um, so, oh, just gonna reach. So this one is what I was saying earlier about blue and white painting, and it's one of my favourites. Um, I really like doing the blue and white painting. It's really simple. Um, literally just using two colours and again I layered it in the same way as we did before we've done tonight layered it start with the white layer your shading on and then use that really fine brush to put that dark outline on everything at the end okay Rachel says the book is really worth having it is a lovely book it's really nice I believe it's out of stock on the Squires website at the minute but it will be back um, so you know you can I think you can pre-order it again or I don't know what you can do but it's it will be back it definitely will okay so thank you all for all your lovely comments and thank you for sticking with me and staying with me tonight I it's been lovely to share this evening with you and you know whatever you guys are doing I know we're all in a really sticky situation at the minute and it's not nice being stuck at home but 
look after yourselves and look after each other and you know stay safe whatever you're doing and we will come through the end of this it's not going to be forever life will go back to normal and you know enjoy caking and enjoy watching these lovely videos and and meeting people online after this is done i'm going to take some pictures of what i've done tonight and i'll put that up so that you guys can see the products i've used and things and yeah it's lovely lovely to have spent the evening with you um so i will see you all again soon take care and bye oh and thank you very much for squires for having me thank you squires for having me squires kitchen are amazing and you know thank you for having me it's been really lovely all right bye